Okay, today I will start with the continuation of the renal pathology and the rest of the renal pathology I uh, wrote on the board so you can see we will start with the hydronephrosis and hydronephrosis it could be unilateral it could be bilateral and we will discuss details about the hydronephrosis because lot of patients you will see hydronephrosis and hydronephrosis can be detected while the uh, baby is in the uterus before birth after birth hydronephrosis you can see the adult old people and there is the pseudo hydronephrosis pyonephrosis we're going to discuss details because they ask a lot of questions about it then we're going to discuss about the renal artery aneurysm and also we'll discuss the renal artery occlusion renal artery stenosis the, and then effect of this renal artery on the kidney then we're going to discuss about the sinus fibrolipomatosis then cortical atrophy solid masses there are a couple of solid masses uh, you can see in the kidney and some of them are uh, benign some of them are malignant like adenoma angiomyolipoma oncocytoma uh, renal calculi means renal stones renal cell carcinoma transitional cell carcinoma we will discuss then we're going to discuss about the medical renal diseases or renal failure uh, diseases and renal transplantation okay let me start with uh, hydronephrosis so i did a space so. Hydronephrosis. Hydro means watery. And nephrosis means it is the process inside the kidney. So hydronephrosis means accumulation of watery liquid materials inside the kidney. So if I draw the kidney, then easily we can understand that where is the location where the watery materials can be collected inside the kidney. If we know the, knew the anatomy of the kidney, then easily you can differentiate Easily you can differentiate that differentiate the cortical area and you can see the medullary pyramids and you can see the collecting system so collecting system collecting system these are minor calyx major calyx and the renal pelvis these are the three structures three collecting system where the fluid can be collected so now we know that kidney kidney produce urine
and urine is a watery substance and the kidney yeah, I mean the urine starts coming from the medullary pyramid to the minor calyx then major calyx then renal pelvis so this is the pathway it will come down then it will go into the ureter and from the ureter it will go into the bladder so it is the bladder and from the bladder it will pass through the urethra okay to understand the hydronephrosis you have to understand up to this level and if it is a male then there will be a prostate gland here prostate gland prostate gland so now urine must go out urine cannot be stored in the kidney urine can be stored in the bladder temporarily and urine that has to come down through the ureter into the bladder and when the bladder is full the urine must pass through the urethra otherwise what going to happen bladder will be super distended so then if the bladder is distended and the bladder pressure is greater than the urethral pressure so then urine will get reflux into the ureter we call it and the ureter will be dilated we call it hydro ureter okay when the ureter is dilated ureter will be dilated then we call it hydro ureter so what do you mean by hydro ureter what kind of water is it it is the urine coming from the bladder why the urine coming from the bladder because the pressure is too heavy. Be, no because the outlet is obstructed yeah. urine could not pass through the urethra there is some obstruction so this kind of obstruction could be bladder neck obstruction due to this stone it, if it is a um, um, baby newborn baby then posterior urethral valve pub on prostate can compress the urethra bph benign prostatic hyperplasia can close so as a result the urine cannot pass there might be a stenosis in the urethra because of the infection like a gonorrhea can cause obstruction there might be stone in external meters posterior shadow you will see the stone okay this is a stenosis this is a stone what gonna happen then failure to be out so as a result reflux will take place bladder will be full then bladder says hey I have my accommodation capacity it is beyond my capacity so ureter take the urine back then ureter says okay send it and ureter gets dilated result in hydronef ureter then ureter is saying hey pelvis take the urine back why I couldn't dump into the bladder so then what will happen the pelvis gets dilated then pelvis when pressure is too much then major calyx and minor calyx all will be dilated and this is urine so background urine will be sonolucent sonolucent means anacoid dark so now this hydronephrosis could be this is the 
introduction that how it gonna happen. So now we'll discuss the hydronephrosis could be unilateral, could be bilateral. And what are the causes of unilateral? What are the causes of bilateral? And what are the causes of hydronephrosis in um, before birth, after birth, and adult and old age? So now, if there's a unilateral, unilateral means one-sided. Okay, now I will show you that one-sided means unilateral hydronephrosis on the left side in the fetus you might see hydronephrosis in the left side okay so this is left side in fetus if you see the left sided kidney has a hydronephrosis then most common cause is pelvic ureteric junction stricture so if this is the pelvic this is the pelvic and this is the ureter so if there is a stricture where pelvic ureteric junction pelvic ureteric junction then what happened there is a stricture pelvic ureteric junction stricture congenitally there is a tightness so then what going to happen? There will be dilatations of the pelvis. There will be dilatations of the pelvis. And when there is a dilatation of the pelvis, then gradually the major calyx and minor calyx all will be dilated. So, sonographically, if you scan a baby, baby means uh, it didn't born yet. And on the left side, you see the renal pelvis is anechoic. It should be less than one centimeter AP measurement. AP measurement means if you measure from here to there. It should be less than one centimeter. Usually it is four millimeter, five millimeter, six millimeter like that. But you got greater than one centimeter, then it is declared as a hydronephrosis. This is the fetus. And it is found on the left sided, the right sided kidney, like this. It is nice, nice looking. But here it is hydronephrosis. So now this baby after birth needs to be followed up. Why? If it is not due to pelvic ureteric stricture, then by six months usually it should be dissolved. It should be resolved. But if after six months you see it is getting bigger, so then this patient needs surgery you got it mm -hmm. good so now this is uh, unilateral and what are the other causes of unilateral one is pelvic ureteric junction obstruction and it is in the fetus and after birth uh, you can see what are the other causes one is pelvic ureteric junction stricture a mass compressing. Second. A mass compressing the ureter. Yes, a mass 
or you can say uh, ureteric stone ureteric stone okay one sided ureteric stone you can say pelvic stones then you will see the ureterovesicular junction obstruction ureteral vesicular junction obstruction another is ureterocil well unilateral ureterocil okay so these are the common causes of unilateral hydronecrosis okay so now bilateral hydronecrosis bilateral means two both kidneys are showing hydronecrosis then what are the causes means bilateral hydronephrosis means two-sided if it is two-sided then you have to understand there must be a common cause normally we we know that both kidneys are coming down this is trigon so this is right kidney and this is left kidney so if both kidney has a common cause what is the common cause so let me give you the idea if both kidneys having stones and blocking the renal pelvis so then what going to happen the minor calyx major calyx all will be dilated all will be dilated so this is one of the cause of bilateral hydronephrosis if there is a stricture of the pelvic ureteric junction there is a stricture so then pelvic ureteric junction structure so this is stones now if the ureter both ureter are stenosis at any places or occlusion occlusion or both ureteral vesicular junction is obstructed ureteral vesicular junction acha ureteral vesicular junction ureteral vesicular junction obstructed or there is a ureteral seal so it could be bilateral now if there is a stenosis or blocking of the outlet outlet obstruction of the bladder so then what will happen bilateral because the urine cannot pass 
and if it is a male adult male or older male so this is prostate gland okay so prostate gland can cause BPH and it can cause obstruction of the urethra due to BPH benign prostatic hyperplasia and for the children there might be a posterior urethra valve PUV posterior urethra valve can close this urethra and cannot pass out now understand from the neck to on outwards anything causes occlusion obstruction on the past passageway so then bilateral hydroleprosis okay so now this is i just showed the causes if it is a stone there will be posterior shadow okay so echogenicity followed by posterior shadow so then let's go that what are the uh, stages of hydronephrosis stages it could be minimum mild moderate then severe and you can say very severe okay if it's a minimum minimum is what no. negligible it is there but negligible minimum <coughs> if this is the kidney then you are getting the kidneys renal pelvis this is renal pelvis and you found that the renal pelvis is renal pelvis is dilated okay renal pelvis is dilated and you can consider that it is dilated but still you measure it the renal pelvis from here to there and in transverse view it will be better if this is a kidney and in transverse view let me draw it nicely okay so now if this is a transverse view understand so this is anterior this is posterior this is right and this is left okay so now you will see the renal hilum is anechoic okay and you measure from here to there you measure and you found that it is a little bigger or equal to one centimeter okay so you can feel like okay it's a borderline so it i can neglect it okay so it will be you will see it is filled minimal okay so now if it is a sagittal view then you have to understand in sagittal view the um, anterior posterior superior inferior sorry uh, inferior So then what gonna happen 
this renal pelvis, I'm just drawing again. If there is a hydronephrosis and you want to catch it, in sagittal view so then you have to understand the orientation this is anterior this is posterior this is superior and this is inferior right so now this kidney you will see in that way let me draw it Okay, so this is upper pole, superior. This is lower pole, inferior. And the uh, ureter is running towards the inferior, right? And you see, usually ureter we don't see, right? But if you see the ureter is dilated and it is anechoic, so you have to notice it and you measure the ureter at this level and if it is once just greater a little or equal to the one centimeter you can see it is a minimum okay so now it is getting enlarged mile it would be greater than one centimeter and it is inside the renal pelvis okay so it would be inside the renal pelvis that means renal pelvis is only dilated okay let me draw the mild one That means renal pelvis is dilated. So this is mild. The major calyx is not yet dilated. So now moderate. How do does it look like? Moderate would be The renal pelvis is dilated and the major calyces are dilated too. See the major calyces are dilated too. We call it moderate. Now severe. In severe condition, you will see pelvis is dilated, major calyces are dilated and minor calyces are dilated too. That means all collecting systems are dilated, severe. 